Hi everyone, welcome to the Digital Champions program. I am Madhav and I am here today to talk to you about some very important aspects of online safety. There are many dangers that lurk online and we need to make sure that we are aware and careful to make sure that our online experience is safe and meaningful. Before beginning, we have to understand that even though we might have the best intentions while surfing the internet, there may be people out there looking for ways to harm us socially, emotionally, financially. Not everybody has the best intentions while online, but using a few tricks, we can keep safe. Let's start by talking about hacking and data theft. What comes to your mind when I use the word theft? Perhaps it is somebody sneaking into your house late at night and stealing your TV or even food. It's easy to imagine in an offline setting, right? Now what if I tell you that somebody can actually sneak into your personal computer without you knowing from a remote location and get access to all of your personal details? Your finances, your personal information, your photographs and even those embarrassing baby videos you have. Now there are many ways that somebody can hack into your personal devices and accounts. They could do it through your laptop, through your phone, your email ID and even your social medias. Now the best way we can fight against hacking is to stop it from happening in the first place, to avoid it. And there are many precautions we can take online to protect ourselves against hacking. Number one, set strong passwords that are not easy to guess. Number two, never log into unsecured networks for Wi-Fi and be especially careful in public places. Now I know we all want free Wi-Fi, but not at the cost of having our personal information stolen. And also remember to always switch off Bluetooth when you're not using it. Number three, use two-factor authentication. Number four, install antivirus and anti-malware software on your devices, your laptop, your phones, your computers. Number five, ignore spam messages, no matter how enticing they might be. Spam messages can look like this. They can look like this. Another possible way to identify spam is to see whether the address of the sender has a lot of numbers or a domain that you don't recognize. The domain is the part of an email address after the at symbol. Some examples of trustworthy email domains include at gmail.com, at gov.in, and at htfc.com. A spam email will also likely have many spelling errors and not be drafted well in terms of language. Be aware of these kind of emails and never click on any links from them. Another very important term to understand here is clickbait. Now I'm sure while surfing the web, you've all come across pop-ups and advertisements that offer you free vacations or expensive things for only 999 rupees. Well, <laughs> these are almost always fake. Nobody is selling an iPhone for less than a thousand rupees, no matter how much we want them to. They just want you to click on that link. And that's called clickbait. Clickbait is a type of content written specifically to attract as many clicks as possible. And any kind of media can be clickbait news stories, interviews, magazine articles, etc. Packaged in a certain way, you can make any kind of web content clickbait. And these typically lead to fraudulent websites that may want to steal your personal information or track your activity online. The only solution? Do not click on them. Now having discussed hacking and clickbaits, I want to introduce you to a very important kind of online danger one that has become increasingly prevalent in recent times. It's called fishing. <laughs> no, it's not the kind of fishing where you go out into the sea and catch fish. But let us use that example to understand what phishing, P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. Now, just like in real life, a fisherman uses bait at the end of the rod to attract fish, right? Now, people online may use bait to attract vulnerable people to fall into the traps and the scams that they have created. For example, they might send you a message saying that you have won 1 crore rupees in a lottery and ask you for your personal information and financial details so that they can transfer the money. Now remember, you never participated in a lottery, but just for a second you might think, wow, I am so lucky. But hold your excitement, because you did not win 1 crore rupees and they just want your personal information so that they can misuse it. And that's called phishing. They can also sometimes call you and pretend to be, say, your bank and ask for an OTP citing security reasons. Now, it's not particularly hard to identify such emails. I mean, if you open the spam folder in your email, you will see dozens of such emails. 
Over time, technology has learned how to identify emails that it thinks are not genuine and make sure that they don't fall into the regular inbox. But sometimes they slip through. So every time you receive an email, a message or a call, ask yourself these basic questions. Do you know the sender of the email? If yes, still be cautious while clicking on links. If no, do not click on any links in the body of the email. Is the sender's email a verified email? For example, if you're getting an email from HDFC, the sender will have an HDFC domain, either hdfc.net or hdfc.com. Remember, the domain is the part of the email after the at symbol. It's easy to identify when an email address is not real. Check for spelling mistakes, grammatical errors, and formatting problems. Are there any attachments in the email? And if yes, is the attachment an executable file? A file with the extension .exe, .php, .com, etc. And even if it's not one of these, be cautious before opening the file. If you have any doubts whatsoever, contact the sender to verify what the file is. Does the message, email, or call request your personal information? If it does, do not respond. Never give out your personal details to anybody online. Even your bank will not contact you asking you for your personal details over email. Remember, your bank will never ask you for your name or your phone number because they already have these details. Have you checked the link? Mouse over the link and look at the URL that it's trying to take you to. Does this look like a credible place to go? Or is it trying to take you to a different website? If it does not look legitimate, don't click on the link. And if you do, make sure you check the website domain and the website credibility. Following these steps can help you keep safe from any and all phishing attacks. Lastly, the final thing I want to talk to you about today is identity theft. Have you ever heard this term before? Identity theft is when someone pretends to be you online and misuses your personal information to commit crimes and fraud, etc. Imagine terrorists using your identity to plan an attack online. Sounds scary, you know? When someone uses another person's personal information, their name, their phone number, their Aadhaar card number, etc. without their permission, it's called identity theft. And it's much more common than we think. Here are some steps you can take to ensure that you do not end up being a victim of identity theft. Change your password often. Passwords must be changed from time to time, and especially after an identity theft. Contact the relevant institutions. Now, what would you do if your phone got stolen in real life? You'd call the police, right? Similarly, if your bank account details get stolen online, contact the bank and have them close that account and start a new one. If your SIM gets stolen, contact your network provider or your telephone company and have them block that SIM. And if you suspect that somebody might have stolen your personal information, contact local authorities. Scan for viruses. Sometimes it's because of viruses on your devices that your personal information gets stolen. And if you don't have an antivirus or an anti-malware on your devices yet, please get one. Now, while this video may have been a lot of information, it is important that we keep all of it in mind to ensure that we stay safe online. Follow all the steps above and take one more step on your journey towards online safety.